Good morning, it's Loralee. So excited to be talking to you today because we are going over DeFi 101. Jumping right into it, what is DeFi? DeFi is an abbreviation of decentralized finance. And to properly understand what that means, we are first going to look at the opposite of decentralized finance, centralized finance. Centralized finance, or what we use now, refers to banks, stock exchanges, insurance companies, and all the entities that make up the financial system. All of the services report up to a single authority, whether that is a person or a company. The major downside to the current centralized system is that because a select few humans are in charge of it, it is prone to corruption, fraud, and mismanagement, which you may have seen if you've ever turned on the news. This brings us to DeFi or decentralized finance. These financial services have no authority in charge of it. This is accomplished using software and blockchain technology. DeFi includes things like crypto exchanges and lending services. For a DeFi system to work, we need infrastructure or a platform and programs or apps to help us do what we want to do on that platform. In DeFi, the infrastructure of choice is currently Ethereum. Ethereum is a platform that allows developers to write decentralized apps. One more vocabulary word to throw in here, decentralized apps are sometimes referred to as dApps because expanded versions of words are for the weak. Using the Ethereum platform, we can write automated code or smart contracts to carry out and manage pretty much any financial service you could possibly want. In contrast to centralized finance, once this smart contract is deployed on the Ethereum blockchain, it is immutable, which means we are unable to change it. So to continue building our DeFi network, we now have the platform and the apps, but we now need a currency. If you landed on this video, you've probably heard of Bitcoin. And while Bitcoin is a decentralized cryptocurrency, it isn't compatible with Ethereum and it just isn't as functional. Looking at other cryptocurrency, a natural next step is the native currency of Ethereum, Ether or ETH. The only problem with Ether is that it is volatile. This is fine if you're investing long-term in the currency, but for more usable day-to-day -day DeFi systems, most people want something that is less volatile and more stable. This is where we get stable coins. Stable coins are backed by real world assets like the US dollar. In 2021, popular stable coins include Tether, USD coin, Binance USD, and DAI. You can read up on each of these coins, but for this video, we're just going to keep it short and talk about DAI briefly. Unlike most stable coins, DAI is backed by crypto collateral and pegged to the US dollar. Without getting into too much detail about what that means, it is basically it's a stable coin, but its value is not not controlled by a centralized authority. So you can buy DAI with Ether or fiat currency such as the US dollar through places like Coinbase or Kraken and use it to purchase NFTs, use it in gaming, and of course use it in DeFi applications. Quick side note about DAI, since I know a lot of you like to use crypto as an investment tool as well, DAI has a unique interest generating program called the DAI Savings Rate or DSR. With DSR, you can put DAI tokens that you aren't using in lockup where it will earn variable interest. This isn't investment advice, just information and hopefully a little bit entertaining. Always consult your money management person if this is something that you are interested in to see if it is the right fit for you. So to recap, the purpose of DeFi was to create an alternative to our current centralized financial system. The first platform to do this was Ethereum, although there are other blockchain platforms that do this out there now. Popular applications of DeFi include stable coins, decentralized exchanges, prediction markets, and borrowing and lending. People use DeFi systems because they are highly accessible, offer lower fees and high interest rates, support increased transparency, have better security, and are autonomous. Okay, so this is all great in theory, but what are some real world applications of DeFi? Aside from stable coins, which we kind of already covered, DeFi systems can also be used to create decentralized exchanges. A decentralized exchange, sometimes called a DEX, is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace that connects cryptocurrency buyers and sellers. They include platforms like Uniswap, Kyber, AirSwap, and 
Bancor. These are different from cryptocurrency exchanges such as Coinbase, Kraken, and Gemini, which also allow you to trade crypto assets, but they may be decentralized or decentralized. Centralized exchanges act as intermediaries in trades. This means that in order to trade on the platform, you need to store your private keys with them. And when you give your private key to someone, they then have access to your funds. So this is why some people don't like to use centralized exchanges. In contrast, decentralized exchanges use smart contracts to self-execute and record transactions on the blockchain. These secure transactions are known as trustless transactions because no central authority is responsible for carrying out the transaction for you. These exchanges are still relatively new right now and represent about 6% of all crypto transactions. Prediction markets are another application of DeFi. Prediction markets are exchange traded markets created to essentially bet on the outcome of events. These events can be things like election results, as in who will become president, quarterly sales for a big box brand, or even how well a movie will do at the box office. The less likely event, the higher the reward. The more likely the event, the lower the reward. If this sounds like gambling, it is very close to gambling and subsequently traditional prediction markets are highly regulated, at least in the US. In the DeFi crypto world, people use prediction markets to stake digital assets, i.e. crypto, on the outcome of real world events. For example, you can bet crypto on who will win the next Bachelor in Paradise. What? What a world we live in. And because we are using the blockchain here, these bets are placed on a smart contract and automatically executed. So there's no way to fudge the results. DeFi prediction markets include platforms like Augur, PlotX, Polymarket, and Gnosis. If you are interested in learning more, definitely check those out. A final application of DeFi that we will cover today is crypto lending and borrowing. Banks have pretty much always offered loans, lines of credit, mortgages, and so on. But right now, your local Chase bank down the street is not going to loan you crypto which brings us back to DeFi. Now on a DeFi platform, anyone with crypto assets can become a lender, not just a bank. And as a lender, you can loan your crypto assets to others and charge them interest on that loan. On the other side of the equation, you can also use DeFi services such as Aave, Compound, and DYDX. These platforms use algorithms and smart contracts to automate the loan payouts. Anyone can see these protocols as they are on the blockchain and the whole thing is completely transparent. There's no financial regulator, no middlemen, or verification process at such as Know Your Customer or KYC to go through. Now this can be both good and bad depending on your situation. And one final note here, this varies considerably, so don't come for me if this changes or if I'm wrong. But as far as interest rates go, DeFi crypto loan interest rates are usually higher on a decentralized platform. If you go through a centralized crypto loan platform such as BlockFi, Binance, or Nexo, you may find a better rate, but you will have to go through more procedures and checks to get the loan in the first place. Okay, that was the greatest hits of DeFi 101. I hope this helped you understand the market that just 1% better. Be sure to subscribe if you want more crypto, metaverse, and biz tech goodness. We will be back next week talking about the best crypto wallets for 2022. Keep living your legacy, guys, and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye.